chairman of the Free State Project, here with Carla, and we wanted to uh, walk through the state of the Free State Project today. Um, if you are at Liberty Forum, you'll see that this is a fairly similar presentation. So I'm going to start out by walking through some of the numbers. So currently we're closing in on our goal. We're getting close to triggering the move. We have almost 17,000 participants. We're at about 84% of our goal. We have 1,755 participants already living in the state of New Hampshire. And the board is very committed to the Free State Project. We currently have seven members on our board and six of the seven board members live in New Hampshire and all of the officers live in New Hampshire. And many of the current and former board members are top donors to the Free State Project. So you can see basically the, the current trend line um, and you know, the growth that we've, we've been experiencing. Obviously we had a huge surge um, early on in the process and, and it's kind of leveled out at about 100 or so new participants per month, but this is something that we can actually change and actually with your help we can trigger the move even faster. Uh, currently, and is this, so this is the most recent updated, so the current projection is that we'll actually trigger the move by the middle of 2017. So that, based on our current growth rate, is when we can expect to hit the 20,000 number. So if you take a look at the Free State Project relative to other 501c3s, which by the way, we are now a 501c3, we have our tax exempt status, and so you can make a tax free, uh, tax deductible contribution. Uh, in the last five years, we've only spent $653,000 total for the entire organization. So if you consider the fact that there are 1,755 people living here, and this is the total amount of expenditure over the last five years, it's a pretty, pretty compelling uh, impact. During the last five years, we've gained 65, over 6,500 new participants. And if you actually look at the, you know, the math behind this, it, it costs us about $100 per participant. So you know, if you add up everything that goes into operating the FSP, our, our participation in events, our online marketing, advertising, so on and so forth, and average it out, it's about $100 per person. So that translates to, you know, if we wanted to trigger the move, Within the next 12 months, if we raise $350,000, we could we actually accelerate. To. Yes, we could actually accelerate triggering the move. So, uh, I encourage everyone to uh, d donate often and donate as much as possible. Um, no contribution is too small. So, um, and the typical mover spends, you know, obviously a multiple of $100 moving here uh, and pursuing activism once they are here. And I want to put this into perspective and compare where the Free State Project is relative to other liberty organizations. You know, Cato actually operates with a $26 million per year budget. Americans for Prosperity has a $17 million per year budget. Reason, over $8 million a year. So again, I mean, you have organizations, they do great work. I mean, they put together um, great you know, intellectual material promoting liberty, but we actually live liberty in New Hampshire, and we've done this on an average annual budget of $65,000 a year. We're like a, the little engine that could. Uh, so you know, if you wanted to actually see the, uh, the relative ratio of funding versus the Free State Project, you can kind of see where we, where we rank in that regard as well. So kind of hitting the same theme all over again. So we do a lot with very little, but we could really ramp things up if we could just get over the, over the finish line and raise a final $350,000 to trigger the move. So summary, based on where we are right now, based on our current growth rates, by mid-2017, we'll trigger the move. And Obviously, already there's been a substantial commitment of, of time and resources. We figured out that it does cost about $100 per participant. So uh, if you can, again, please help out and, and please help uh, contribute and, and help us cross that finish line at a faster rate. Is that... Oh, is this me? Okay. Um, 
Oh yeah, okay, and one other thing, so uh, Seamus, our treasurer, who originally developed this, so if you're wondering why I keep on looking at these slides, I'm kind of seeing them new for the first time as we're all going through this. Um, but Seamus is our treasurer, he's also on the board, and he's actually put, put up a $25,000 challenge grant. So every dollar that is contributed to the Free State Project up to $25,000, Seamus will match and on a one-to-one -one basis. And that offer is valid through the end of the year. So um, thank you very much to, to Seamus. And here's an opportunity to get... <clears throat> and, and, and here's an opportunity to get even more, more leverage on a contribution to the Free State Project. So uh, again, please, uh, please contribute. I will now turn it over to Carla. Hi guys, so um, I'll be talking a little bit about some of the programs we do here with the Free State Project and um, some new ones we're introducing. And let me just figure this thing out. So the first thing we do is basically anyone who is part of the Free State Project automatically becomes an ambassador for our ideas. Um, most of the people that you talk to will say that they heard about us word of mouth. Social media has also started to take a bigger role in that. But what we are trying to do is to put together an actual ambassador program that you can take on the road to, you know, if you're not a mover, to your community, to the people you know there, where you can talk about the Free State Project. And we are going to be preparing uh, their slides, their 20-minute presentations that you'll be able to download. Um, you'll have brochures and statements of intent. So it's basically like being an FSP ambassador in a box. You'll get little tools that you can use to help convince other people to sign up. You know, it's a, it's a fairly big commitment. Obviously, the pledge itself is just a pledge, but the actual moving part is, is a big commitment. You know, you're making a decision to change your life and to come live your life productively in liberty. And as people who do it, I think we are the best ambassadors to spearhead and to convince other people that that's a great way to go. So if you're interested in working on this program to help us trigger the move, you can email Jason Sorens, who of course is the founder of the Free State Project. His email address is up there and we'll also post these slides online, but you can email Jason at his uh, Dartmouth address and get those tools to help spread the word. Um, we also have a new program, which will be the Friends in New Hampshire. So basically, uh, you know, we chose the state of New Hampshire for several reasons. 101, if you go to the website, but it really is because there is this sentiment of live and let live in the state. People are sort of naturally libertarian leaning and we want to awaken that sort of sleeping giant within the state. We currently have about 2,500, um, 2,514 friends of the free state, but ideally we'd love to get that number up to, you know, 20,000 as soon as possible, because that also tends to show people, you know, we have our naysayers, we have some progressives, you know, who like to point fingers, you know, and people get scared when they see the successes we've already had. And so there has been a bit of a start of a pushback. So if we can show that there's both a, a voting block, but then also, you know, tens of thousands, 20, 30,000 people who are our allies within the state. So we want to push that number up. We'll be coming out with like a little postcard that you can carry around. And that would be something more for the in-state movers, obviously, to go um, to gun rallies or, you know, if there's a four 20 rally or a state house thing, take those with and see if you can get some friends of the free state to sign up. Um, we'll also be doing little town halls across the state. The first one is scheduled for uh, mid to late July, I believe it's July 17th. And that will be just informal at mostly libraries or at college campuses to really sit down and talk to people. You know, it's interesting. I, I um, I met Rand Paul a couple of weeks ago. He was up here for, um, you know, the campaign trail. New Hampshire is a really fun place to be during the primaries because it's the first in the nation presidential primary, so everyone comes through here. Um, I tried to set up a Shanghai informal debate. No one, no one bit, but I wanted to have Trump 
Bernie Sanders, Vermin Supreme, and Rand Paul do a debate. Um, strangely, the real campaigns are like, what? No. <laughs> but who knows? You know, people always show up and surprise us at Porkfest, so we may have some surprises later in the week. Um, so stay tuned. Check our website also. You know, people tend to forget that you know, we're all on social media so much, but we have a pretty good website with a lot of information, and that's a good place to go if you have a quick question about something. Um, I talked a little bit briefly about this at our opening welcome, but uh, Gloria Lustek has introduced this new program. It's called the Pork Buddy Program, and basically what we're trying to do is to uh, match a mentor with a new mover to help you when you move so that you can really, you know, hit the ground running. They'll be able to tell you, you know, which auto shop to go to, who's a great doctor, and really help you within the town or the region. One of the beautiful things about New Hampshire is every town is really different, you know. This is very old school. You still go to your town hall meetings and you, as someone who lives in the town, if you're a property owner, can sit there and go through that that town's budget, line item by line item. So, you know, you can really have a personal impact. Um, and so the Pork Buddy is going to help you understand your town, understand your town's needs, and just really help you assimilate as you move here. As we get closer to triggering the move, and as we have more people moving, you know, on a weekly basis, this past winter was the first winter where we saw a steady clip of people coming in, even in the winter months. That tends to really accelerate over the summer and the fall as, you know, people just, you know, I like to think people come to Porkfest, get inspired, go home and say, I'm packing up and I'm moving to New Hampshire. But uh, we're going to have the Pork Buddy program. And if you have any questions about that, you can email porkbuddy at freestateproject.org. As I mentioned earlier, word of mouth is really the way we get things out. We also are always looking for Free State Project doers. Um, I see Randy Clemens in the back there. He's someone who recently moved from California, who has just come in and decided he's going to be a doer. You know, we had a couple of meetings. I told him some things I need, and he was like, I'm just going to run with it. He put three things on the program during Porkfest, take a look in the program, maybe come to those and figure out how you can help and contribute because, as I like to say, it takes a quillage. Um, so join me. I'm the queen of bad puns. <laughs> Um, so there is a doers group on Facebook. Uh, feel free to join that. That's kind of where we sometimes brainstorm. We do a lot of our planning and organization. As a decentralized organization, it makes sense to you know, use those kinds of tools. We also like to make it easy for the NSA to know what we're up to. That way they can tell you know, <laughs> we're not up to too many shenanigans. If you're not on Facebook, you can uh, feel free to contact me using the contact form on the freestateproject.org site. If you have a great promotional idea or if there's something you want to do, talk to me. One of the beautiful things also about this model is Sometimes people don't even talk to me. They just go out and do something cool. And I'm like, that's awesome. You got, you know, 50 new signers just by running with the ball. Because ultimately, you know, as philosophically, you know, we believe in decentralization. We believe in people power. We believe in people taking responsibility. So go out there and, and do it. So five easy ways you can help is to um, promote the Free State Project. And that can be as simple as writing blogs where you mention it. If you're on forums, maybe make your signature line, freestateproject.org, where people can go and look and find out more. Um, letters to the editor, very, very good, especially in state. That's where we've seen a lot of traction. You know, New Hampshire is a little old-timey. People still read the newspapers. And uh, we've had some, I've had people actually come to me and say, wow, you know, I read about an issue and, um, you know, it changed my mind when you, there's actual dialogue that's happening in the local newspapers here. Um, use your social media, of course. If you want to speak, if you know about a good event, maybe you have some niche interest, I don't know, you're a 
art artistic welder, and you're like, hey, there are cool people like that, or maybe you're a brony. I still think that's probably a really good market for us. <laughs> Um, you know, or a tattoo conference or something where you think there might be some kind of overlap. A good example here last week was Bike, uh, bike Week in New Hampshire where about 1, 000, uh, 150,000 bikers come up. That would be a great opportunity if you're a biker, come up a week early, do some outreach at Bike Week. Um, download the statement of intent, carry it with you, check out the website. If you want swag, ask us, we'll mail it to you, we'll help you, um, because we want you to help us get the word out. Hashtag it. So, you know, social media is now our number one way of getting new signers. For many years, it was Free Talk Live, and they're still very supportive and they still help us. They're now our number three behind Facebook and social media. We have a strong Facebook and social, uh, Twitter presence and we have lots of porcupine groups. If you're here at Porkfest and you are someone who is socially media savvy, please hashtag PorkfestXII, Porkfest12, um, and also hashtag NH, it's like this too. So I want to talk just briefly about that idea of the decentralization and of people just really picking their passionate project and working on it. So we'll, we have it on the program, it's scheduled to show, is the new documentary that was independently made um, by Bo, our cameraman over there, and Vince Perfetto. And they wanted to make a movie about the 101 reasons that New Hampshire is a great destination for liberty lovers. And so they made it. Um, it took them almost a year, they fundraised themselves, and um, it has over, I want to say, last time I looked it had 52,000 views, so, you know, it is a great tool for people to learn more about the project. Um, that picture didn't come out, but um, there are several new movers who've moved in the past year who started a program where we partnered with Ron Paul, uh, the Ron Paul channel, which is now known as Voices of Liberty, and they do these many five-minute documentaries. It's an interview with a new mover. They basically ask him, you know, what's your project? What are you working on? Why did you move? And, you know, what's your activism? They're short little sound bites, and they just give you a flavor of different kinds of movers because, you know, not everyone is the same, and maybe someone feels, you know, really passionate about off-the-grid living, and they're not that interested in gun rights. I mean, all of those things, of course, go together, but, you know, people can really find someone that they relate to, that they feel, wow, okay, you know what, this person could be my friend and neighbor. Um, so those are actually pretty fun, and I would suggest going to check them out sometime. But we do these state-by-state -state comparisons where we compare other states to the state of New Hampshire, and we share those on uh, Facebook, and they do incredibly well. They will easily get shared, you know, 100,000 times um, because people in those states get annoyed, and when they get annoyed, they want to debate, and when they want to debate, then they have comments, and that's a really good way, it's sort of a good Facebook trick to drive some traffic and to get the debate going. Um, we now have a folder where those are saved, and we'll make that URL available on the website, so if you are someone who likes to troll, uh, you know, <laughs> those are good resources to go pull to post. Um, we have several mothers and women in the community who felt that there was a real need for more family outreach, more, you know, just really building a, a network for, you know, mothers with young kids, the homeschooling community. So they've uh, come up with several projects, including the, uh, we, have a, we have a porcupine co-op now. Most of us you know, belong to a co-op. We meet up once a month. We have a community market day. Um, Jessica and Donna also organize a new movers party, which we host once a month in the community center in Manchester, uh, which is called The Quill. And, um, we like to welcome our new movers, everyone gets to meet each other, you know, so kind of keep the tribe and the family so everyone knows who's who. Um, so 
I wanted to let everyone know so that proper planning prevents poor performance. So uh, next year's Liberty Forum will be done by Angela and Emmett Harris, who are in charge of the pavilion this year. Thank you. <laughs> um, these events are, have become a really, you know, it's a really big undertaking and it's a testament to people. You'll see the same sort of lead volunteers year over year until we burn them out, of course. <laughs> I'm still standing. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, we're going to be seeking volunteers for that, but also just save the date so that you guys know that you should come up and join us in our beautiful winters, which are actually not as terrible as people think. You know, people complain about the weather, right? But if you're down south, you're running from aircon to aircon. And here in the winter, we kind of go from, you know, heater to heater. And if you embrace the winter, it's actually quite wonderful. Yuri is teaching a yoga class right now, but one of the things I love that he does is he always takes his camera everywhere and he just takes photos. And that's really something we need. And of course, Tennyson for years has been taking wonderful photos photos. Um, I did tell the newspaper to not put, I, I had them use your real name. Yes, because I was like, can you please not make the photo credit black bloke? <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> Um, so also people will just, you know, create a Facebook ad, they'll donate the money and just run that for something they feel passionate about. Um, usually if you have a good news item or there's a tie-in, for example, we did, um, we did some ads when Liberland announced, uh, is everyone familiar with what that is, right? It's this, uh, sovereign nation that was declared in a river between Serbia and Croatia. And, and uh, Camille went there. <laughs> um, and we should talk about that when we're done here. That's great. But, you know, I, I wrote an essay about that because, yeah, I mean, I encourage anything that spreads the ideas of freedom and where people try to claim freedom. But I do believe that what we're doing in New Hampshire here is really the best chance for liberty in our lifetime. That, you know, I don't want to throw down too hard with them, but I was sort of like, who's going to build the roads, right? <laughs> we already have an infrastructure here and we can use these things to really leverage and start, you know, running from the start instead of having to build it from the ground up. So we ran some campaigns and those did pretty well. Um, I want to take a quick minute and we'll do a big shout out at the end of the month, but you know, these are the people you should be thinking about and thanking when you see them around. We have these beautiful V for Volunteer shirts. When you see those folks, buy them a drink, ask them if they need something, you know, just really, it's, it, it takes the quillage and, you know, I just really want to appreciate everyone who worked on Pork Fest this year. Can we give them a round of applause? We always have things going on. Um, we always need to fundraise. So if that's you know in your ballywick, I'm always happy to talk to people about that. Um, for me, I think the issue is if we had more money, we could do more marketing. What kind of marketing would we do? We should brainstorm about those things. But we could be buying, you know radio ads on Howie Carr's show. He's a guy, he, he does talk radio, he's a conservative, he has drive time, he's on, you know, 17 stations in New England, it's Massachusetts, Maine. You know, New England really for us is a great target market because one, you don't have to convince it's hard when we go to Vegas to convince someone to move here. It's not that hard if it's in a neighboring state, right? Although the value proposition remains the same. I mean, I came from Africa, so, you know, it, it snows here, so what? Uh, <laughs> so some of the other projects we're working on, um, we decoupled the Free Stater magazine, which will now, it'll be its fourth edition that'll be coming out this fall. Um, that's, you know, it's a 32-page a uh, glossy magazine with articles from everyone from Jeffrey Tucker to just movers here. Um, 
you know, highlighting good stuff about New Hampshire and just talking about philosophical uh, liberty topics. We have um, the Google AdWords, so that was pretty cool. Once we became a 501c3, Google will give you a $10,000 a month AdWords grant. You can't spend it, like the way it's set up is a little weird, like you have to bid on words and it's hard to figure out the right words and whatever, but we've been doing some A-B testing and we've actually seen a fair amount of success with that. So we're going to be really leveraging that. We have a team of, of experts who are now working on that and uh, we're hoping to see more of that. Um, in the coming months. Something I'm pretty excited about is the Next 1000 Movers program. So back in 2008, we did a mini pledge to try and get 1000 people to say that they would pledge, re-pledge, and then move within that year. From those people, we got about 30% who did move. I moved because of that, because I was like, okay, you know what, hey, if everyone else is in the same boat, let's do it. And that's really where we saw that sort of re-energizing of the organization and the movement and you know liberty has become a popular thing and we are in the fortunate position where we're not in the er experimental stage anymore like this is not you know uh, there was a newspaper headline this week that said uh, libertarian laboratory comes to the white mountains or something and I love that that's great but we're not really it's not you know we're not a petri dish we're not an experiment we're actually proof of production we're actually doing it it's working it's happening so you know don't hesitate really get in on it and um, I believe it really is our best chance to build a beacon of liberty for the rest of the world, but also the rest of America to see these ideas work and they can be done and that they are something that um, really will cause us to be more free in our lifetimes. Our greatest needs, and I made this slide as bad as possible because uh, we need qualified graphic designers, <laughs> um, and then obviously fundraising. So, you know, the theme this year for both our events was, are you moved by liberty with the, you know, like I said, I'm the queen of bad puns, right? So we meant the double entendre, obviously, are you moved deeply emotionally by liberty? And then of course, if you are, can you move here, come here, become the reinforcements? And it's not just that it's reinforcements, it's actually awesome. I have never talked to a new mover who hasn't been like super excited and just really sort of soulfully satisfied by their choice of doing this because there really is something compelling about being with people who, who think like you, who are like you, who believe what you believe, who are principled and who are willing to work to do something, you know, it's really easy to sit on your duff and complain all day. I mean, we can all do that and we probably all do do that to some extent. But the beauty of what we're building here is that you don't, one, have to be alone. You can be in a quillage, in a actual community, and you can make change and you have backup. Getting arrested on a, you know, high, you know, back street in the middle of the night, like happened to me and, you know, six free staters showed up within the first 30 minutes. And I didn't even do a pork 411. Someone just happened to drive by who was a porcupine and they were like, Carla's getting arrested on the side of the road, you know? I mean, it's like that. You can, you know, in Manchester now where we have the highest concentration of porcupines, I, you know, when I do an errand run, I will drive by and I'll see a car and, you know, it's like, hey, you know, there's a pork. And sometimes I don't even know them anymore. They have the bumper stickers and you're like, who's that person? Um, so spend this week here, find out what we're about, talk to our board members, pop by, ask questions, talk to all the volunteers, and really ultimately, um, Come find your tribe and come change the world with us. That is a great point. So we also have an Amazon Smile account. I will add that actually to the slide. It is right there on our homepage. You can just go click on it, it'll give you the link. So if like me, you shop a lot on Amazon, that's a great way to support us. You know, 
you're going to shop there anyway. You may as well kick a little money back to us. That's a really easy, effective, low impact on both of us way to, to support the Free State Project. Um, we're going to take some questions, or if you have great ideas for things we should be doing, um, there's a mic right over here. Uh, you probably have this on your website, but what's the best way to get a profile of each of the, if you're in, interested in moving here, what's the best way to get a profile of each of the major towns or areas within the state? And so you can see where uh, it would be the best fit for moving. Yeah, we, ha we have some of that information on the website, and then also there are um, some tax maps. You know, New Hampshire also has from town to town, there are very different tax structures. New Hampshire doesn't have a personal income tax or a sales tax, so, you know, property taxes are not as high as in many states, but it's not the lowest. You know, we, we win, New Hampshire generally wins on many, many, many of the freedom metrics. That's one that they don't. But um, there are unzoned areas in New Hampshire where you can go build without any kind of zoning, and there are actually tax-free areas. Now, clearly, those aren't going to be, you know, in a neighborhood in Manchester. It's going to be in one of the more remote areas. But those options are available. So definitely on the website. And then also specific questions we can start to do with the pork buddies where someone can help you. And then Mark Warden, who will be here later this week, who is a two-time state rep, um, he's the porcupine realtor, and he knows everything about everything, so he's always a great guy to ask. If I'm an investor and I have a lot of money, what exactly would be the best ROI or return on investment for uh, giving to the Free State Project? Would it be to uh, help sponsor ads, or would it be to you know, uh, put people in different events, liberty events, concerts, music, what, what exactly should I be doing? I would say just directly contribute to the Free State Project, make a tax deductible contribution, and then you know we'll we'll allocate it internally based on best use at the time. But but to give you examples, let's say um, a couple of projects that I would love to see funded as fast as possible. So our two events. Uh, Liberty Forum costs us about $63,000 to put on and it breaks even. Porkfest costs us about $120,000 to $130,000 to put on and it breaks even. Okay, so we're not making money on these events, so it's not really a fundraiser. It is our showcase to show everyone what we're about. On top of that, we make about 63000 a year in fundraising. And that really is just because we've never actively dedicated ourselves to that. And now that we have 501c3, we are. But when I pitch a donor, it obviously depends on what their needs and flavors are. But, um, you know, I would love to have a little money in the kitty to actually pay a couple of uh, big name speakers to come out for Liberty Forum. We want to sort of change up Liberty Forum a little bit where we could get like one big name speaker and then we can just showcase our community. We find the people who are coming to our events really want to learn from us because people here are doing all kinds of stuff, you know, whether it's court cases or civil disobedience or running for office or how to, you know, effectively be off the grid or, you know, whatever the project is. So we really want to showcase the community more. and. I am actually someone who thinks, you know, we don't always have to have libertarian speakers. I would love to bring out someone like Seth Godin, who wrote The Purple Cow and who's a marketing expert, right? And say to him, hey, we have this project. How would you market it? <laughs> um, so something like that. It's also the ads. I would love to do radio ads to put something like a Howie Carr radio ad by in perspective. You can buy remnants for his ads, which means you get them at a discounted rate because it's what they have left for that week that no one took. It costs between $150 and $200 per one minute ad. You have to buy tw and blocks of 20. So I don't know, who, most people here may not listen to NPR, but I do. And you know, I can actually say all the ads of those, you know, a just and verdant world, you know, whoever those guys are. So, <laughs> 
Yeah. So sort of have something like that. Like I'm like, why? What, we should be advertising on NPR, <laughs> and you know, we'll be like liberty in our lifetime. You know, like occupying New Hampshire since <laughs> 2003. <laughs> Um, so there are various projects, but um, and sometimes donors are like, I want you to spend this on this. They might have an idea. But for the most part, it comes to the general fund, and then we as the board work together and, you know, come up with stuff. Um, I, you know, I want, I want cool swag that says trigger the move. It's time. Like, we need to be there. So there's, there are many ways I can spend money. I just need it. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say a little bit more about the Pork Buddy program. I'm Gloria, by the way, and um, we're, if you're a new mover and you need to buddy up with somebody, email us at porkbuddy, B-U-D-D-Y, at freestateproject.org. But more importantly, we need mentors. Um, we have a base about 20 now, but if you want to be a mentor and you've already moved or you've lived here already, um, please email me and, you know, let me know. Let me know what region you're in, what town you're in. Uh, right now we have no representatives in the Seacoast area, and we have nobody in the White Mountains area. And we've got a pretty, oh, we got a pretty good base um, all across the bottom of the state, but more north you go, we have a lot less representatives. So please email me. And the other intention of the Pork Buddy program is you've moved, you mentored up with somebody, you lived here for a year now, pay it forward, and also become a pork buddy and, and help some another new mover. Thank you. Thanks, Gloria, and thank you for taking the lead on that. Any other questions? Well, then you know what the state of the free state is. We're broke. <laughs> but um, we hope everyone has a really, really wonderful pork fest. And um, yeah, have a great time, and I'll see you guys around. <laughs>